So then not only were you going to take the startup again, but actually you were going to take the money out of your bank account, your little nest egg and use it yourself when you could very well have gone out and raised some money, especially you a successful entrepreneur. What drove that decision? Well, I don't know whether it's Eastern Asian thinking, but uh, there is, well, also remember, I don't come from a business background. And so uh, for many people, money is very personal. And what I learned through my previous lives with startups was if you raise money early, most of the company is owned by somebody else, which is just not a great situation to be in um, because you're the one doing all the work. On the flip side, when you lose, you're answerable to all those people for losing their money. Now, that startup life, that's how entrepreneurs are. It shouldn't be a big deal. But for some reason, it was a big deal for me. I was more comfortable losing my money, where probably the only person I had to console was my wife. <laughs> uh, but uh, I just didn't feel like I would have to awkwardly explain why I lost somebody else's money. And so that, for me, was a black and white decision. And I'll give you a third reason. So one is, you know, if you win, you own most of the company. If you lose, you're losing your money. You're not answerable to anyone. And number three, if you take apart how the venture capital world works, when you pitch a VC, you're one of 10,000 people wanting their money. When you become successful, you're one of 20 companies they are trying to desperately get into. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, listen, if I win, they're going to come after me anyway. If I lose, I don't have to answer to anyone. So it was just super clear that I should just fund it myself and find out whether there's a real business here that's going to be successful. Mm -hmm. 